Hello and welcome to the uh, Psychology Squared presentation for the National Psychology Exam on Psychopharmacology. I am Claire Farley and I'm Jess Kaufman. So tonight we've got some slides to go through with you and um, we're, we're excited to present. Wonderful, yes, it's a bit of a bit of a large topic, bit of a mouthful, a few tongue twisters in there as well, but we'll try to simplify it for you guys as much as possible. True. All right, here we go. Acknowledgement to country. In the spirit of reconciliation, Psychology Squared acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to the elders past, present and emerging and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. Just a disclaimer, um, this is recording for the provisional site sitting the NPE and this is not a substitute for your own study preparations. Uh, and in addition to that, for ethical reasons, this is not an exam coaching session. And before we get started, just a brief about Psychology Squared. Um, it has a lot of resources there for provisionals. Uh, including a logbook that has a lot of formulas in there. There's also NPE groups that are run over a 10-week period. Uh, there's a free NPE book finder. There's also more than 120 questions being put together in a Kahoot style, which is like an auto timer, isn't it, Jess? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's a really fun interactive way of um, getting through questions. And there's also um, some clinician tools too to help you with your work. There's also blogs. There's also group and individual supervision. And there's also newsletters, which for just watching your provisional status, you know, encourage you to join up as well as follow us on Facebook. So Jess rabbit and I have had a bit of a holes. chat about this rabbit. <laughs> Um, so this is just a couple of things for tonight about um, this is a starting point. Remember, it's recorded. So pause, come back, watch it again. Um, there's a lot to cover in the time we have together. So there might be some prompts on the screen that we might um, present to you. They give you a chance when your own time to go and explore it further. We encourage you to spend time um, learning the content early. Um, I think, Jess, we both can speak from our own experience of sitting the exam, um, that there are a lot of terminologies in this topic. Mm, absolutely. It's, yeah, and that's the thing. And I know you're about to talk about the rabbit holes, but um, you know, I think it's so fitting that there's a little bunny there because it's just one of those topics that you can really delve deep into, almost too deep. And so that's why we've got those bunnies there. <laughs> um, just and to you help. Look silly. Yes, yeah. <laughs> just as a reminder <laughs> to you that, you know, you, you need to obviously learn the content, but that you kind of need to find that point where you need to stop and move on to the next topic. <laughs> Yeah, we've got a few rabbits through tonight, so we're going to show you perhaps what we mean by that. And it's a, it's a quite an interesting topic, but it's just with everything else on your plate for the NPE, it's a question about how far for this section you want to, to spend. Right. Yeah. Now, the next few slides are a bit wordy, but I've got them up here just to show you how we've uh, constructed tonight. So this is from the curriculum. I'm going to put the reference down the bottom, and you can see there it says both detailed and generic. So it's quite a broad... Um, representation of things you need to learn but I won't spend too much time on that you can read that by pausing us this next one looks even more crazy um, but the top <laughs> sections part of interventions we're not covering tonight that's to do with more with the uh, therapy style intervention and the bottom section is what we're focused on which I've got expanded on the next slide in addition to this content, remember, pause us to read it all. I've bolded up some sections here which help for Jess and I to prepare tonight's content. And without again reading that, I just want to show you how that looks in bullet point on the next page. So this could be your study plan that you may do for your own NPE to expand on what Jess and I present to you. From that previous slide, this is really the content for tonight or today for your study. Um, and you can see there's a lot to get through. So this is not just what we're covering tonight, but this is the content from the previous few slides. So yes, the exam. So um, 45 questions in this uh, section. But remember, it's not just pharmacology. It's also the therapeutic approach as well. And it's about your applied knowledge. 
So what you'll learn from this recording, really it's about how you would apply it to your clients. Anything on that one, Jess, that you think's worth adding? Um, no, I just, yeah, I mean, interventions, you know, one of those um, big topics like ethics and, and so on. Um, and I think, yeah, it just... It, it, there's just so much to learn I think that's the that's the crux of it really there's so much to learn but with this topic in particular um psychopharmacology um it's it's one of those really really massive ones that you need to condense and and work with what's actually mm. realistic <laughs> what's going to be relevant so for this topic so yeah. true so true <laughs> couple of handy books that we've come across in, in our studies. Um, so these may or may not suit you, but these are the ones that uh, we all have worked through. And there's also on the side, there's a tab there with some more documents that you may wish to research. Me personally, I like mnemonics and I found there's a couple of things in YouTube. I'm not sure about you, Jess, whether your learning style is this way, mm -hmm. but, you know, there's the mnemonics here about how to remember SSRIs or SNRIs or a whole range of uh, pharmacology. I wish I, had, I knew about that when I was studying. <laughs> Anything <laughs> visual is much better for sure. Yeah, I think it gets very wordy, this topic, so it can mm. be a little bit overwhelming. So when you're just trying to pull it together. So, yeah, everyone's different, right? That's it. That's it. <laughs> Yeah. Um, for Psychology Square, there's a few resources there that if you are doing the study group, um, this slide is for you, that uh, reminded that there is the uh, resources on the website. If you're stuck at all, talk to us as part of the group. But if you're not part of the group, just remember the previous slides are there and you're welcome to inquire about the next group um, and even purchase recordings. So before we get started, just have a bit of a pause and think about what you already know about this topic and how you're feeling about taking the exam. It's just that that moment to reflect. I think it's, you know, Jess, as you and I have spoken many a time again about the exam, how it can feel at moments overwhelming. Mm. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I think taking a moment is probably good, not just for this topic, but good practice for the exam <laughs> um, because yeah, you'll so you know, inevitably come across big questions and things that you go, oh, goodness, I know the answer to that. You know, what is it again? And it's easy to feel overwhelmed and stressed out. Um, and, you know, I think um, it's just, it's really good to practice some of those, um, you know, self, you know, calming skills <laughs> uh, before you yeah, go into true. it. Especially when there's five multiple choice and, you know, they can be two that are very similar. Separating oh, those out. I always it really found is that. Just... There were two <laughs> that I was like, oh, I swear it could be either of these two. <laughs> and then you've got so to take true. take a moment and, you know, and choose the best answer. <laughs> very true. All right. Here we go, Jess. Here we go. All right. Let's start off, everybody. Um, so pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics. So um, obviously psychopharmacology is the study of um, drug-induced changes in mood, thinking and behaviour. But if we really get into what um, pharmacodynamics and kinetics are, um, you know, they're really essential concepts in the field of pharmacology that help us understand how drugs work in the human body. Um, so I am going to try and keep it fairly brief. Um, as we've said, it can be so easy to go down those rabbit holes, um, but let's dive in. So pharmacodynamics, this refers to what a drug does to the body and how it exerts its therapeutic effects. So it's essential in the study of drug receptor interactions and the resulting physiological responses. So some of the key things um, for pharmacodynamics are the receptor binding. Um, so drugs um, often work by binding to receptor to specific receptors in the body, um, like a key fitting into a lock, if you imagine it that way. Um, mechanisms for action, um, of action. So understanding how uh, a drug interacts with its target helps us predict the effects. And then dose response relationship. So the relationship between the dose of a drug and its effects um, are critical. Uh, if we move to the right in red there, um, pharmacokinetics, um, that's what the body does to the drug. So how it's absorbed, distributed, metabolized and excreted. So some of those key concepts there are absorption. So how a drug enters the bloodstream, whether it be by oral or injection, etc. Distribution, how the drug spreads throughout the body. 
uh, metabolism, how the body processes um, and breaks down the drug, and then excretion, which is how the body eliminates the drug. Um, and then moving on from that, we've got classes of the pharmaceuticals. So I believe that's on the next slide. Oh, here we go. There's a rabbit. Oh, sorry. <laughs> there's, there's, a rabbit. About that. there's a rabbit. Um, and look, so this rabbit's there just to show you, you know, from moving on from what I've said, this is just, there's so much extra content that you could go down um, when looking into pharmacokinetics and dynamics. And, you know, you can read through that if you like and pause, but we're not going to touch on all of these rabbits because this is just an example of you can go down and down the tunnel <laughs> um and it's could, probably too much like, yeah easily spend 10 hours on this topic oh, and start going that way hey Jess easily absolutely so let's not do that tonight let's move on <laughs> um so I'll be looking now into I guess the classes of pharmaceuticals um, and the categories of drugs designed to treat specific conditions. So we've got some major uh, classes here um, and we're talking about scheduling drugs as well. So if we start with scheduling, that's a national classification system for um, um, that controls how medications and chemicals uh, are made available to the public. Um, medicines and chemicals are classified into schedules according to the level of um, regulatory control, I suppose, over the availability of the medicine or chemical required uh, to protect public health and safety. And so here's that list. Um, and there, uh, it's sort of broken down into one, um, you know, not currently in, in use all the way down to 10, which are substances that are of such danger and um, to the health of the public that they're completely prohibited of the sale and supply. And so they're totally banned. Um, so feel free to um, look into all of those. I'm not going to touch on every single one of them, but um, it just shows you what the different uh, classes of scheduled pharmaceuticals are. All right, then we'll get into the seven classes of drugs. So um, we'll explore these substances. I'll just touch on, I guess, the common side effects, uh, the interactions and the effects on the central nervous system. So um, the first one we've got here is um, central nervous system depressants. That's what the CNS is um, and they slow down the operations of the brain and the body and the body and uh, examples of CNS depressants include alcohol, um, barbiturates, anti-anxiety tranquilizers so like Valium, Librium, Xanax, Prozac, um, GHB which are gamma hydroxybutyrate. Wow I'm really oh, testing wow. out my reading <laughs> skills here. <laughs> Um, and obviously many others, and we're going to talk about um, antidepressants and so forth um, later in the presentation. Um, we've got the CNS stimulants, so they accelerate the heart rate. They do the opposite of depressants, and and they um, elevate your blood pressure, and they speed up and overstimulate the body. Um, and I guess examples of that are things like cocaine, um, amphetamines, uh, methamphetamines, things like that. Uh, we've got hallucinogens, so they they cause the user to perceive things um, differently than they actually are. Um, and examples of that would be, you know, LSD, um, MDMA, psilocybin, things like that. We've got dissociative anesthetics, um, so they include drugs that inhibit inhibit pain uh, by cutting off or dissociating the brain's perception of pain which is fascinating um and it uh pcp it's analogs and dextromethorphan <laughs> are examples of dissociative anesthetics so look there you go there's so many tongue twisters in here i can't even wrap my head around them all <laughs> and, and and jess the good the good news is the npe is not a verbal test Exactly. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I swear I recognize just the words of, of some of these, but I just, it, as soon as you start reading them, you're like, hold on a minute. <laughs> yes, um, so true. We've got narcotic analgesics. Um, so they relieve pain, but they also induce euphoria and create mood changes in the user. Um, so examples of, of that would be things like opium, codeine, heroin, um, that sort of thing. Uh, we've got inhalants, 
um, and they include a wide variety of um, breathable substances that produce mind altering results and effects. Um, though they can include um, toluene, uh, plastic cement, paint, gasoline, paint thinners, hairsprays, you name it. Um, things there are things that can be inhaled um, and then there's cannabis uh, which is obviously the scientific name for marijuana uh, the active ingredient in cannabis is I'm not even going to try to read out that whole <laughs> word THC no, no wonder it's called THC right <laughs> exactly. Um, and, exactly and that includes um, cannabinoids and synthetics um, and yeah I'm going to, I'm going to stop. I think I've done my dash trying to pronounce some of those words. Very, <laughs> done very well. Beautiful. All right. So we're going to now head into the five psychotropic medications, which are the antipsychotics, antidepressants, 